Okay, let's see if we can get you to understand what the domain of a function is. And let's see if we can do this in about 10 minutes. Now, functions is a critical part of um, algebra and more advanced mathematics. And along with learning about functions, you need to have a great solid understanding of the domain and range. But we're going to focus in on the domain as this is uh, probably a uh, more of a typical question in terms of uh, functions, i.e. find the domain of a function. This is a question for sure that you're going to be able to um, uh, have to handle if you're taking any sort of algebra course. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick review of the domain. Some, I'm going to highlight some main concepts that if you're um, struggling with the domain, hopefully in this quick video, of course, I'm going to try to keep it around 10 minutes, will help you out. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, there's no such thing as a bad math student. So if you're struggling in math, you can do much, much better, but it requires two things. One, you got to work harder. Okay, so if you're not putting in the work, you got to work um, hard to learn math. Uh, now the second thing you need is great math instruction, clear and understandable, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. Also, if you're preparing for any test with the math section, things like the GED, SAT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can help you out. If you homeschool, I have great middle and high school uh, homeschool math courses. So you might want to check that out. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this big fancy word domain. And here we have a function. We'll use this as an example. I have other examples that we're going to be using. Uh, but let me ask you, do you know uh, what the domain of a function is? Okay, now if so, uh, just put in your own words into the comment section what you think the domain of a function is. There's all sorts of technical definitions, but you can kind of get a pretty good, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to relate what the domain is. So if you think you know, go ahead and put that in to the comment section. And let me ask you, uh, along with that, what is the domain of this function here? Okay, I'm going to, of course, answer this in one second. But let's get going and quickly get a good understanding of what the domain of a function is. Okay, so here is a function, and you could tell it's a function. It has this little notation right there. Now, what a function is, that's a separate video. If you need additional help with this stuff, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel, or in the course I teach this very thoroughly in all of my algebra courses. But this is a function. We would um, uh, say this is f of x is equal to 2x uh, squared plus 1. So this is the function f. Now, let's suppose we're going to plug in a number here into this function. Let's plug in 3, okay, into this function. So we're going to replace this x with a 3. So this x here, we're going to replace with a 3. And then we're going to evaluate this function uh, for 3. So this will be 2 times 3 squared plus 1. 3 squared, of course, is 9. 9 times 2, 18 plus 1, we get 19. Okay, so you can see here... I'm saying that 3 is a domain. Well, what I mean by that is 3 is part of the domain. The number 3 is in the set of the domain. So let me tell you what the domain is. Okay, The domain is basically all the numbers that we are allowed to plug into a function. Okay, What numbers can we plug into a function such that when we replace this number, or this variable, with the number that we're going to plug in, we actually get a number out. Now, the numbers, the respective numbers that we get out of a function, once we plug in numbers into it, all those numbers is called the range. That's a separate uh, conversation. But if you're studying the domain, you need to know a little bit about the range as well. Okay, so that is basically uh, what the domain is. It's the uh, set of all allowable numbers you can plug into a function. Now, there's all sorts of ways you can describe this, but effectively, that's what the domain is. So in this particular function, 3, uh, we got uh, we were able to get the number 19 uh, when we plugged in 3 into this function. So this is an actual number. So we um, uh, 3 would be part of the domain. Now, the domain is generally an infinite amount of numbers, so we don't express it like, oh, 3 works, 4 works, 5 works. There's other ways uh, to do it. But just big picture uh, concepts, that's what the domain is. Now, I want to stress something right now. 
that I'm going to keep this at more like the high school algebra one, algebra two level in terms of uh, finding the domain of a function, which means that we're going to um, find the domain with respect to the real numbers. Okay, not the real number system. We're not going to get into the complex or imaginary number system. That's something different because our answers will change if we look to find the domain of a function under the uh, set of complex numbers. So this is a little bit more advanced. We're not going to handle that. In this video, we're going to stick to the real number systems. Again, the real numbers is all the numbers on a number line. So here's zero, here's one, here's two, all our fractions and decimals. Here's negative one, here's negative two. So all our positive and negative integers, positive and negative numbers, all these numbers here are the real numbers, okay? And that's what we're going to be talking about with respect to finding the domain of a function. That's pretty typical uh, for you, um, you know, those of you out there are maybe studying college algebra, algebra 2, algebra 1, etc. All right, so now let's get into the domain a little bit further. So when you're asked to find the domain of a function, okay, what we're really asking is what numbers can go into this function? What numbers can you plug into this function right here? Well, when you think about it, you're like, well, I could plug in 3. We already did that. But could I plug in a negative 1.9? Yes, you could. Okay, You would just simply replace this x with a negative 1.9 squared. You go ahead and do that. Nothing seems like there would be a problem. As a matter of fact, in this function here, the entire set of real numbers, Okay, let's go ahead and just do that again. Here's our little lovely real numbers, 1 and 2 and negative one, negative two. So this is the entire set of real numbers. We can plug all these numbers into this function right here, and it wouldn't be a problem. Okay, nothing would uh, break on us, nothing would blow up on us. Uh, so for this particular function, the domain would be the entire set of real numbers. Okay, so uh, that's how you would express that. Now there's other ways you could express a domain of a function in terms of the notation, but that's effectively what you're trying to um, answer. You're trying to answer the question, hey, what numbers can go into this function? So let's take a look at some conditions here that will give you some issues when you're trying to find the domain of a function. All right, so here is one. So uh, here's a function, f of x is equal to the square root of x. So let's ask the question here, what numbers can go into this function? Okay, the, the numbers that can go into the set of numbers that we are allowed to plug into this function would be the domain of the function. Okay, so if you think about it, you're like, well, you know, uh, what could we plug into? Can I plug in 9? Well, let's see, the square root of 9 would be equal to positive negative 3. So there's no issues there. However, this is what you need to know. Again, we're talking about the set of real numbers. So these are the two conditions that are not allowed when you're finding the domain okay, under the set of real numbers. Now, the first is you cannot take the square root of a negative number, not in the real number system. Okay, So if you see something like this, uh, let's say I had... Uh, this function, again, f of x is equal to the square root of x, and I want to take um, f of negative 9, okay? So that would mean I'm going to take the square root, or I'm going to attempt to take the square root of negative 9. This is not allowed, okay? So this is a no-no. So negative 9 would not be the t uh, part of the domain. Again, we're talking about the real number system, okay? So you cannot have a negative underneath a square root, and the second situation you can never have is something that causes a zero in the denominator where there's a fraction. Okay, so you can have like f of x is equal to 2 over x, and then try to find f of zero. So that's 2 over zero. Zero would not be allowed. So zero would not be a part of the domain because it's causing a zero in the denominator. Likewise, in this function, negative 9 would not be the part um, part of the domain for this function because it's causing a negative underneath the square root. Okay, so these are the two conditions that you need to be looking out for when we're finding the domain under the set of real numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to this question here then. So f of x is equal to the square root of x. What numbers can go into this function? Uh, so anything that's not a negative number. Okay, so what is not a negative number. Okay, well, if we kind of look at the number line here, here is zero, here's our positive numbers, here's our negative numbers. 
certainly all the positive numbers are not negative, but zero is okay because the square root of zero um, is zero. So as long as it's zero or above or greater than uh, zero or greater uh, uh, of, in terms of its value, we could plug in any number that's at zero or greater than zero. Okay, so we can express that this way. So the domain of this function is x is a real number. Okay, all x's such that x is a real number and all uh, these x's are greater than or equal to zero. That's one way to express that. Another way to write that is that the domain is uh, zero in this notation. This is called interval notation. Okay, this means that x is greater than or equal to zero and um, all the numbers are greater to that. So this is a little bit more advanced. They basically mean the same thing. There's a, any number of different ways to describe, hey, all x's that are greater than or equal to zero is um, the set of all these numbers right here is the domain of this function. Okay, so that is the big picture concept. The notation, how you write that is stylistically, there's different ways, but as long as it, if you're describing it in some sort of way like that, I'm pretty sure your teacher will give you credit for your answer. Okay, so hopefully you're getting uh, this, but let's go ahead and take a look at another example, okay? So here is a function, f of x is equal to five over two x plus one, it's a fraction. We have a variable down here, so now I'm thinking, okay, I have to be careful of some x value that I plug in, any value that I could plug into this function that would cause this down here to be equal to zero is a no-no, okay? I can't have that. So uh, what value uh, would that be? Well, what we do is we take the denominator, 2x plus 1, we set it equal to zero and just solve for x. And so when I do that, you can see x is equal to negative 1 half would cause us a problem. So in other words, in this uh, function here, if I go f is equal to negative one half, well, what happened? Well, I would get five, and then when I plug in this negative one half right there, I would end up with a zero in the denominator. This is not good, okay? So therefore, negative one half cannot be a part of the domain. So the domain could be all x's that are a part of the real number system, but not x is equal to, uh, x cannot be equal to negative one half. So again, uh, the notation, the way you can describe the set of values in the domains uh, varies. And you do need to know that for more advanced uh, math courses like pre-calculus or maybe algebra two, uh, things like the interval notation and whatnot, but anything kind of like along these lines is okay. Okay, so this video probably is a little bit over 10 minutes, but let me just go ahead and uh, wrap it up this way. So let's suppose uh, you were given a question like this. Here's a set of points, okay, x, y ordered pairs, and let's go ahead and find the domain of uh, this function, okay? So here's a function, and uh, it's described by 1, 3, 4, 7, negative 2, 6, 5, 9. Now again, each one of these is an x, y ordered pair, so the way you can do that is by constructing a mapping diagram. So X maps to Y. So you should be familiar with this uh, concept. If you're not, I have tons of videos on this in my uh, various playlists on my YouTube channel. Of course, I teach this uber thoroughly in all of my algebra courses. By the way, if you need a pair of algebra notes, I'm going to leave uh, links to those uh, in the description of this video as well. But here, the way you would do it is one maps to three, okay? One maps to three, you could, it, this is always the way you write it. This is an independent variable, this is the dependent variable, and then over here is the actual coordinate. So one mapping to three is the point one three. Of course, we could plot this on a graph, and then we would map four mapping to seven, negative two maps to six, and five maps to nine. So if you were asked what is the domain of this function, it would be the set of all these values. Okay, the domain is associated with the x value and then all the output values, the respective output values uh, based upon the input values, all these right here are is the range. Okay, so this is the domain, this is the range. Okay, so I did cover a lot of ground, uh, probably went a little bit over 10 minutes, but again, when it comes to algebra, you absolutely need to master functions. This is a huge topic, okay? What is a function? Well, what is a one-to-one -one function? How do you find the inverse of a function? How do you find the domain and range of functions? How do you graph functions, function translations? Again, tons of information. But if you know this pretty well right now, well, then I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A+. 
100% for being an awesome math student. Uh, you're definitely paying attention in your math class, or maybe you've been watching a lot of my math videos. Either way, good job for understanding it, but this is still fairly basic. Okay, you're going to want to follow through and study this uh, at a little bit more advanced level. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.